Okay, in this video, we'll be taking a look at the so-called look and say sequence. So we'll be defining what this look and say sequence is. We'll be showing how the sequence itself is generated. And then we'll be asking a question of how to generate the nth term in the sequence. And we'll take a look at how we can code up that problem in Python. So let's go ahead and define what the look and say sequence is. So the way that the look and say sequence starts off is it starts off with the number one. And then we take a look at the number that we're given in the sequence and we say how many of the number exist. So for instance, there is one, one present so far. So there is one, one. So therefore the next term in the sequence is generated by that phonetically. And we have the term one, one. So this gives the next term in the sequence. Let's go through a few more examples of generating more terms of the sequence to make sure that the uh, concept is clear. So again, we have the first term, one, the second term, one, one. So to generate the next term in the sequence, we'll look at how many terms there are of this. So there are two ones. So in that case, we'll have two, one. So again, to generate the next term now, we say there are one, two, and there's one, one. So one, two, one, one. So let's keep going. So the next term is generated by looking at this and saying there's one, 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 two, two, one. So one, 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 two, and then two, one. And just to keep going, there are three ones. So three, one, two, twos, and then one, one. So that's the final one, one there. So it keeps going in this fashion. So if you want more information on this particular sequence, if you're curious, there's also a Wikipedia page on uh, some more information about how the sequence is defined and some other properties that the sequence has. So I'll link to that in the description below to this video as well if you're interested. Uh, but the problem statement that we're going to focus on in this video is we're given some integer n and we want to determine the nth term in the look and say sequence. So for instance, if somebody gives us the integer n is equal to four, we want to determine the fourth term in the look and say sequence. And in that case, that, that term is one, two, one, one. Because if we have the look and say sequence here, the first term, second, third, fourth, this is the fourth term in that sequence. And that's the one that we want to generate given the integer n is equal to four. So we're going to go ahead and code up this solution in Python. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and open up an empty text editor here, and we're going to go ahead and solve this problem. So the way that we're going to solve this problem is we're going to break the problem down into two functions. One function is going to be responsible for generating the next term in the sequence given a term in the sequence. So for instance, to go back to the slides, if we were given, let's say, this number here, this sequence, which will in our case, interpret as a string. If we're given this one here, then the function will be responsible only for generating the next term in the sequence. Likewise, if we were given this term as a string, our function would only be responsible for returning this next term in the sequence. So it would just process each of these elements one by one as a string, and then it would determine the next term in the look and say sequence by the algorithm that we kind of um, very topically went over in the way that we generated the sequence. And then what we'll do is we'll call that function however many times we need to in order to generate the nth term. It's kind of the approach that we're going to take. Let's go ahead and write up that first function. So we'll call that function next number. And this next number function is going to take a string. So again, the string is going to be the sequence of digits that corresponds to that term in the sequence that we care about. We're going to assume that it's given to us as a string. We're going to go ahead and define two variables we're going to initialize at the front of this function. So we're going to say result, which will initially be equal to an empty list. This list will store the result of the final term, the next term in the sequence. And then we'll also define a variable i is equal to zero. This term will be an iterator that will allow us to move one by one through the sequence that we're get to through the term that we're given. So we're given a term as a string. We want to process each of those numbers independently as we go through that string, we want to keep track of how many times a certain number has been encountered. And we want to keep track of how many, um, how many times this has happened because this is how we're going to generate the next term in the sequence. So what we're going to do is first we're going to have two loops. The first loop is going to move one by one through each of the numbers in the string that we're given. So we're going to say while i is less than length of s. And then what we're going to do is we're going to define a count variable which will set initially equal to one. And as we move along in the sequence, 
what we'll do is we'll start off here. Let's say we let's say we were given this sequence here as a string, and we want to generate the next term in the sequence here. So what we'll do is we'll process each of these individually, and we'll say, okay, we're here. How many of these are there? We we know there's at least one. So we'll check if this and this, the one right next to it, if they're the same. So if they're the same, then we have at least a count of more than one of whatever term we happen to be on. So we, we only have one one so far, so we'll keep note of that, we'll move on to the next one. So we're on two, we check if this one and the next one are equal, they're not, so we move on, we make note of that, and then we're on this one here, so this final, or this third one. So we check if this one and the next one are equal, they happen to be in this case, so we make sure to increment our count variable because we've encountered two ones, and we wanna make sure that we reflect that when we generate the next term in the sequence. Let's go ahead and continue to code this up because I think it's a little bit more clear when you see the code. So we've got our count variable, and then what we're gonna do is we're going to define another loop, which is going to determine whether or not the term that we're on in the first loop and the next one in the sequence if they're the same. So that's going to keep going until either we hit the end of the string or until uh, these stop being the same. So for instance, in this case, we, we hit the end of the string before they stop being the same. In this case, we hit a new number, this number one, before, before uh, we get to the next two. So we have two and two, these two are the same. We check if these two are the same, they're not because this is a one. And so that's the other condition that we want to check for. So the two conditions that we want to check for, while i plus one is less than the length of the string, so we don't want to read beyond the bounds of the string, and s of i, the term that we're processing, is equal to the next term in the sequence. So if both of those things are true, we're going to enter into a second while loop, which is going to increment the count variable by one and also increment i by one because we're continuously moving along in that string. So we're gonna say i plus equal one, count plus equal one. And then once we exit this inner while loop, that'll mean that we've counted however many number of terms that we're on. So we're gonna say result dot append string of counts, we're gonna convert that to a string, and then we're also going to append on the s of i term. So for instance, if we go back here, if we are on this term here, we've counted a two, there's at least one two. We check if the next one is also a two, it is. So we increment the count, we increment i, because now we're processing this one. And now we again check the next term in the sequence. The next term is not a two, it's a one. So we exit that second while loop, we append the count, which in this case is two, plus the term that we have to be processing, which is two. So that's the way that inner while loop works. So we'll append that on, and then otherwise we'll increment i by one. And then what we'll do at the end of both of these while loops is we'll just join the result. So we're storing the result into a list, but what we want to do is we want to actually just join all those elements in the list into a final string. So we can just use Python's join method to say return join result. So let's go ahead and make sure this function works as expected. Let's go ahead and give this function this term right here. So if we give the next number function as a string, one, two, one, one, we should see that the next term in the sequence generated should be this one right here, one, one, two, two, one. Let's go ahead and verify that's the case. So we'll say print next number, and then we'll say s. We'll define s up here to be equal to one, two, one, one. I believe that's right. So we want this one, so one, two, one, one. So let's go ahead and save that and give this a run. So indeed, let me clear the screen because there's some extra output there. So we indeed, we see this sequence, sequence one, 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 two, two, one. So that agrees with the next term in the sequence. So we have a way of given one of the terms in the sequence, we can compute the next one in the sequence. So all we really need to do now is we need to just call this function however many times uh, is equal to n. So if we want to generate the fourth term in the sequence, we just need to call this number however many times, in this case, n is equal to four times to get the uh, fourth number in the sequence. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's say n is equal to four. And then what we're going to do is we're going to call this function that many times. So we're going to say four i in range of n. We're going to say s is equal to next number of s. And what we're gonna do actually, since we're 
putting s into this function initially, we need to define the first term of the sequence as just one. So we'll say s is initially equal to one. So s is initially equal to one. We assume that we want to calculate the fourth term of the sequence. We range over all of those four elements, and then we continually call this next number function uh, on s. Initially s is equal to the first term of this sequence, which is 1, but we know that we can call this next number function that will give us the next term. So for instance, if we call this next number function on 1, we'll get the term 1, 1, and so on until we hit whatever desired n we, we want. So what we'll do then is we can actually print s. Let's print s along the way. So we'll get every term in the sequence up to n is equal to 4. So let's go ahead and write this and give it a run. So we see the term, the initial term is 1. We have the second one, which is 1, 1, 2, 1, 1, 2, 1, 1, and 1, 1, 2, sorry, 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, 1. So, so we've actually generated too many terms. So I think in this case, what we want to do is we want to range from not n, but to n minus 1. So if we say range from not to n, but to n minus 1, because we've already given ourselves the first term here. So we're kind of starting off with one already. So we only need to go up to n minus one. So that was my fault. So let's go ahead and write that and give it another run. And indeed we have the first term again, which is one, the second, which is this one, third, and then the fourth term. So that pretty much does it for this video. If there's any questions or comments or anything of the sort, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. The link to this code will be up on my GitHub page. Link to that will also be in the description. Thanks again for watching and have a great day. Bye.